uh, question nine. Assume that an electron in an atom can be treated as if uh, it were confined to a box of with, uh, that's interesting. Um, and when it says box of with, I think it's talk about the one dimensional box. So we are saying, so we have a, uh, we have a box of um, some size. And uh, even though the questions didn't explicitly specify it, I'll treat this as an infinite square well, as in the potentials on the left or right hand side, it's so high as to be insurmountable. The box has some size, L, and um, there are certain energy levels that you are going to be able to feed a standing wave solution to. So there's a ground state solution that'll have a waveform that looks like this. There'll be the first excited state that'll have one more node in between, and so on. It goes from here. And it asks, what is the ground state energy of this electron? And, and there's a really quick intuitive way to answer this, uh, which kind of goes like this. Uh, let me demonstrate the quick portion. You can say, um, energy. So we are dealing with a situation where the potential energy of the um, electron is zero. It's kind of confined to a box within this region. We'd say potential energy is zero. Then basically this energy, all of it has to be kinetic energy, which is can be expressed as momentum squared over 2m. Now here, m is known. We are told it's an electron. So we are talking about an electron mass. So really all you need to figure out is uh, what is the momentum of, uh, of this uh, ground state electron? And this is where you can invoke De Broglie uh, hy uh, hypothesis. Momentum of a particle is related to its wavelength by Planck's constant over wavelength. Uh, now, looking at this picture here, I can kind of see how this wavelength here relates to L. Uh, I kind of need a double of L for a full wavelength. So this, um, so this wavelength lambda is 2L, the size of the box. So the mean, the ground state momentum um, for this electron in the box will be H divided by 2L. So I can plug it in here and get the ground state kinetic energy of uh, H squared over Two squared times two, so eight, and times L squared. That's it. Um, so you can also get this uh, with a Schrodinger equation. Um, you can do it the long way, or you know, look it up in chapter seven, section four. Um, but uh, this will this will work, and all you need to do is plug in um, uh, constants. So let me just say H uh, Planck. Planck's constant squared divided by eight times electron mass times uh, three point two angstrom squared. Uh, it's you know ten to the minus ten meter. Uh, Wolfram Alpha will interpret it for me and uh, plug in correct thing. Okay, H is Planck's constant. Electron masses, yeah, three point two angstrom. Okay, looks good, good, good. I need the energy in electron volts, ah, 3.67 electron volts. Yeah. 3.67. And note how um, comparable this is to the um, to the hydrogen you know, ground state, uh, which and uh, about one angstrom is kind of the atomic size. So all this kind of matches up. Um, yeah, so it, uh, this model is reasonable in the sense of well it's giving me giving us a ballpark numbers but what the, what this uh, infinite square well model of an atom won't give you is it won't give you the correct spacing of energy levels because when you look at the Bohr energy levels it goes as one over n squared and here it the energy levels will go n squared not one over n squared but uh, okay that's the question
let's keep going. Question 10. Uh, it says, assume that a proton in a nucleus can be treated as if it were confined to a one-dimensional box of some width. Okay, uh, let's sketch this out. And so I wonder if I can bring back the sketch. Okay, okay, okay. I, let me just rearrange some of these sketches and I don't have to redo the whole thing. Um, so this is, was my picture of that electron and, you know, it's now a proton. It's a, uh, uh, wait, it's now a proton in a nucleus, but that's fine. Uh, so instead of an electron mass, we'll be dealing with a proton mass. That's good. Um, and we are going to still use the same paradigm where, hey, it's particle in a box, zero potential energy. We only have kinetic energy to deal with, which is given by this, um, which uh, in which case you can uh, you can use the de Broglie relationship for the momentum, and for the ground state it'll be h over two l. So the with all that the ground state kinetic energy, which is also the just ground state energy of the particle is this. So it's the question of hmm, what modifications do you need uh, to um, extend this out to the excited energy levels? So I have the ground state energy here. This is my, uh, let me label this as E1. This is the N equals one state. And this is going to be my E2. And let me draw the next uh, standing wave solution that I can expect to find. So I'm just trying to draw its energy level roughly where it'll be. Uh, the important thing is that it'll have one more node. So it'll be two nodes. So the standing wave solution will look like this. And let me call this E3. And as you look at this, I hope you see a pattern in the wavelength of these. So if we, we could say that the wavelength here was twice the size of the well, then the wavelength here, so that's lambda one, lambda two, that's the uh, length of the well, or uh, just to help uh, us see the pattern a little bit more quickly, we could say, oh, that's two L divided by two. And uh, the wavelength of this energy level is, um, so it's, uh, uh, three halves, or <laughs> I guess this is the relationship. L is equal to three halves of lambda three, or solving for lambda three, lambda three would be uh, two L over three. Two L over three. I hope you uh, you can see the pattern. So the numerator is remain the same. Two L. That's kind of the basic length, and we are going from two L divided by one to divide by two divide by three that's how the wavelength is going so if that's how wavelength is going then um then the for more general case the nth momentum what you need to say is it's a n h over 12. so uh, tracking this change to here the nth kinetic energy it, and the level kinetic energy is n squared, uh, h squared over that. Yeah. Yeah. And this uh, feature that you see here will actually be quite common as you work through, um, uh, quantum mechanics, which is that this, uh, kind of quantization number n, it always have, tends to go with the h, Planck's constant. I don't think I've ever seen an exception where it doesn't happen that way. It's kind of quite common feature to see. So uh, let me just uh, plug in the numbers. It says, what are the energy of proton when it's uh, in the state corresponding to n equals one, two, and three. Okay, I can work out n equals one, and then the rest I'll be just multiplying by four and multiplying by nine. So let's do that. Um, I have this uh, expression, oops. Um, all right, so, well, wait, do I already have everything? Planck's constant squared, uh, 
divide by a times not electron but proton mass now uh, times and what's the size a seven femtometer okay uh, seven times ten to the minus i think 15 meters so seven femtometer yeah that's the, about the nuclear size so that would be my ground state energy and all from alpha says yeah it understood everything fine in electron volt it says uh the 10 to the 6 that's a mega so 4.18 mega electron volt 4.18 and the let's just uh, make sure that the answer there is correct and the rest is uh, simply uh, scaling so the n equals 2 state is greater than that by factor of force so 4.18 times 2 squared that uh, equals to 16.72 and 4.18 times 3 squared that's the n equals 3 state 37.62 36.62 I can't remember these numbers all right good okay uh what are the energies of the photons emitted when the proton makes a transitions from the first and second excited states respect yeah so it's just asking for difference in energy uh, the photon will carry on away the difference in energy unless uh, somehow it has to happen by more than one photon uh, but i think the question is implying it should be one photon that makes that transition so for this transition it will be um 11 11 no sorry 12.54 i think i'm trying to do the Subtraction in my head. <laughs> this one should be 32.44 uh, thing. These are super high energy uh, energies. I think even for gamma ray photons, these are pretty high energy uh, gamma ray photons. Almost unrealistically high, even though it says uh, fairly realistic. Within an order of magnitude, I think that's what I mean. Uh, Okay, I think I have enough time to finish up the last question. Let's see, question, I think I have done 11. Ah, I've done this. All right, I must not have done question 12 in the past because uh, I thought, hey, that's another particle in a box question. Uh, a lot of particle in a box question because uh, to kind of, it's the only setup where you we can solve for explicitly and uh, it's it also uh, one of those situations where you can get an answer just by through intuitive reasoning. Like I'm doing at this session, I'm actually not using Schrodinger equation like telling you to use. Uh, okay, a box, uh, electron confined to a box, emits of photons. Longest wavelength that is registered is uh, 560 nanometer. Okay, that's interesting. Um, so you gotta work this through, and I'm pretty sure that's what the hints are describing, you know. So uh, it helps to have a sense of energy levels, which my previous picture kind of gives. So let me just uh, keep this around for now, and so that I can point to things. Um, you can kind of see the energy level separations here. So when you look at the um, energy level difference, so you know there's no difference from the ground state to anything below. Like this difference here doesn't mean anything. There's no E equals zero state that the particle can go down to. This uh, E equals one state that is the lowest state and you have this uh, energy difference delta e between two and one and uh, and once you introduce e three you have two different energy differences that you could look at you can look at this delta e three two or you can look at this delta e three one so if they had asked for something that corresponds to the largest amount of energy difference, uh, we would be in trouble because with the infinite square well, um, there's no limit. The E equals whatever, N equals infinity to the ground state that can be anything. There's no limit, uh, which is where it's uh, uh, a little bit uh, reassuring. Uh, 
uh, I'm breathing a sigh of relief in seeing that it's looking for the longest wavelength. And given the relationship between the momentum and wavelength, longest wavelength means smallest momentum. Smallest momentum means smallest energy difference. So it's really looking for at um, between which levels are the energy level differences the smallest. And I think you can already begin to see that. Uh, going from E1 to E2, looking at this, that is already smaller than the next level. And as you go to higher level, this, with this uh, N squared dependence, the difference between neighboring levels will only get larger and larger. So really, what the question, the information that the question is giving us is that this wavelength here, that's the wavelength of transition from level two to one. So that's what it's saying. So it's saying, okay, so for that wavelength, that, um, or so the energy of the photon, which is, H Planck's constant times frequency, which is Planck's constant times speed of light divided by its wavelength. So this wavelength, uh, transition two to one, is given by the, so this energy of the photon is given by the energy difference between transition from level two to level one. So we are looking at, okay, this is my nth state energy. So I'm looking at the n equals two energy level. So two squared h squared over eight ml squared minus the e n equals one energy level. One squared h squared over eight ml squared. And I can do a little bit of a simplification just to make my calculator work a little bit easier. I can factor out h squared over eight ml squared. So h squared over eight ml squared. So I have two squared minus one squared or four minus one, which is up. That's just three. So the expression that I'm plugging in, um, oh wait, sorry, I'm not plugging in. I need to solve for L. Um, so uh, let me just uh, write out a cleaned up version of the equation that I can solve for L from. Um, so the cleaned up version is I get this left hand side hc over lambda given is equal to 3 over 8 h squared over ml squared. Okay, I gotta solve this for L. Uh, let me just cancel out uh, one thing that cancels out, one factor of h cancels out. I can imagine moving L to the left hand side by just multiplying everything by L squared. Um, oh, and, uh, by, and move this over to the right-hand side by multiplying through by lambda over C. Okay, when I do that, then I end up with, on the left-hand side, just uh, L squared. On the right-hand side, L squared cancel, and I have uh, 3H over 8M and times lambda on top divided by C on the bottom and to get um, to get the, the L, take the square root of both sides and we are done. So, so yeah, that should be it. Let me just uh, plug in the numbers. I'll use Ulfram Alpha. It'll do a couple things for us. Um, I won't have to plug in any uh, numerical values, uh, constants, I don't have to look them up. And Wolfram Alpha will also check the units for us. It'll give us some um, uh, unit quantity and we can check if it looks right. So it's gonna be square root of three times Planck's constant times uh, wavelength uh, that was 560 nanometers divided by eight times it's an electron, so electron mass times speed of light. And somehow if uh, I made a mistake in the algebra, it, the answer it gives won't have correct units. That's how we can tell. Let's make sure it understood me correctly. 
3h times lambda divided by 8 mec. Okay, that looks right. Okay, it's giving me answer in uh, length. That's good. Uh, in fact, the nanometer is the first one that okay, 0 0.714 nanometer. 0 0.714 nanometer. And uh, I guess that kind of makes sense. You know, 560 nanometer, that's visible. It's just sum of the wavelengths emitted by hydrogen. This is kind of at the atomic scale or a little bit on the large side. Uh, you know, the correspondence shouldn't be exact because this is particle in a box. Um, the hydrogen atom is the Coulomb potential. They have different structure altogether. But in terms of the kind of the rough size scale, it feels right because uh, if this had been on a millimeter scale, I would have been suspicious because visible light, millimeter scale doesn't really match. But visible light and uh, the fraction of nanometer scale that at least uh, it scans. So.